Hi everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today I am doing a mod snapshot. This mod has been developed by BD Armory and I'm showing it to you guys because I think for a weapons based simple mod that doesn't involve all kinds of crazy installs I think this is one of the best ones I've found so far and it may be making its way into my Kerbal Space Program PvP series. So, uh, before we start opening, actually before we open all those files up, let me just show you. Now the parts themselves are in the utility section and nowhere else. And I'll just flick through a few pages. Uh, yeah, they're in there. So if I load up something, uh, I'm going to load up a tank that I made with these parts. Now these parts, the good thing about them is that they are fully compatible with other mods. As you can see here, I've used the armor plates from KW Rocketry and there's some B9 Aerospace stuff kind of in the chassis as well just to show you guys that these mods don't spaz out there's nothing special you have to do to get this weapon mod to work and attach to other mods and damage them in fact it works by uh, a the weight of the bullets whether it's uh, the explosive value of the bullet versus the parts uh, resistance to impact so it's pretty simple calculation and you know not every hit's going to destroy the part there is a bit of randomness thrown in so it's not guaranteed destruction uh, with a lot of the things some of the things do guarantee destruction almost if you hit them others don't so as you can see here uh, the mod itself revolves around this part here this is the thing that you're going to want on everything you build with this mod it's called the weapons manager now this is just here this little funky black thing here if you right click on uh, when you're in the game you right click on it it allows you to cycle through your weapons and to fire them in individually thus saving a whole load of action groups and it allows you to stagger launch things like bombs and missiles with just one simple push and if I go to my action groups and click on the item there you go you can see fire and cycle weapons are its two options and you can just do that and custom one two three anywho Let's go back to the parts. As you can see here, on the very top thing here, it's the A1 Abrams Cannon. Now this has got 20 shells in it, and currently in this version of the mod uh, that I'm currently on, there are no additional ammo that you can have for the turret. So you're kind of stuck with 20 shells and that's it. Also on this tank you can see here these little 50 cal machine guns, which are kind of cute, kind of funny. They're the smallest kind of, uh, they're the smallest weapon, which is just here, the 50 cal turret, and that's a 360 traversable weapon. It actually moves all the way around and can point up mostly. The other weapons that there are, you've got a Vulcan cannon, which is a 20 millimeter Vulcan cannon, which has a 90 degree fire arc, which I'll demonstrate to you guys in a bit. And also you've got a fixed 30mm, think think of like the Warthog cannon, it goes on the A10 Warthog. Uh, it's a fixed gun mount, so as long as you're pointing at the bad guy, they're going to get mulched pretty quickly. And each of these particular weapons have got their own type of ammo box. As well as these, you've got two different types of missiles. You've got the little Hellfire missile, which is best against ground units but it's got a effective range of about a kilometer so anything inside a kilometer your gravy outside of it its fuel runs out and it slowly loses controllability so it can steer its way to a target in atmosphere if you're not too far outside that 1k but when it does hit it's got a large explosion um, large explosion kind of radius but it's not great at doing orbital kind of like in atmosphere quick turn stuff it just loops to target and blows it up with a big explosion on the other hand you've got the aim 120 homing missile a little bit like a sidewinder it's supposed to be air to air it's not got a big explosive warhead it's got it does have a slightly lower blast radius from what i've experienced but it's got better controllability in the air and a longer range so it's good from uh, to fire from an airship to an airship now here's a little point is this weapon, these missile weapons, don't track and don't fly in space. They launch in a straight line and they'll go on to infinity along that straight line. And they are still affected by strong gravity fields. So places like, uh, like any near any major planets, they will curve very slightly towards the planet. But they can't track because the only thing controlling their motion, their, their, the way they move around, is they've got fins and as there's no atmosphere in space 
you're not going to be able to have them move. But they're, they're pretty decent in space, they're just straight line weapons. Everything else on the other hand works perfectly fine. A little note that you might uh, might want to ask, these weapons here, these these items, if I, oh, let's just be ridiculous, let's grab this, it won't, if you notice it's red, the item's red when I click on the turret, these weapons won't attach to themselves, they, they, they're they non-attachable, so they'll attach onto anything else except for themselves in this mod. Um, I'm going to pull this laser out just because. Now this is a big radar dish laser -y thing. This heats up a lot of power and is overheats an item until it explodes. Or you overheat and there's a cooldown period before it actually uh, is able to fire again. So obviously this is very useful against fuel tanks, engines, stuff that overheat easily. Versus armor panels, they don't really have a very, they don't have a low overheat value so you end up having to shoot quite a lot of them. Uh, and last but not least is the Mark 28 bomb. Now what I'm going to do is, is get rid of that. I'm going to launch this bad boy and I'll show you some of the actions of the different weapons and stuff, how they work, and how the guns work, the traverse mount guns, and then I'm going to fly a airplane that I've made. One's a bomber and one's kind of like a missile airship kind of interceptor -y thing. So there we go. Now we've got a few other tanks nearby. But well, let's, let's with this tank, uh, let's go, so let's activate the turret. There you go. So we've activated the little 50 cal machine turrets. Now you can see they're both individually tracking and they're actually, because they're on two different sides, they're not tracking the same way, but they're basically following my mouse. The guns, all of the guns, including this, if I activate this one, toggle turret, there you go. He's still he's going to follow my my uh, mouse as well, and if I kind of aim up in the sky there, they can all fire. There you go. You see the tank rocking there. And now I'm going to turn off the turret, and then there we go. There are those 50 cows firing off. And if we fire off to one side, you only one of them will be uh, actually firing. There you go. You can see him striking the ground there because this one. They are clever enough not to shoot at your own ship, which is actually something that's quite important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick to one of my other tanks. This guy is a, well, he looks like some kind of missile bombardment tank, which you'd be very correct and it is. If I just right click on the module, again, these can be uh, put, these can be fired via this little guy. So... Again, these can be shortcutted uh, on your buttons, 1 to 10. Uh, we've got the Hellfire missile there and the homing missile. But if you notice, my tank over there, he's still firing. In fact, he's still trying to fire over here. <laughs> he's trying to do his best to fire, so I'm glad I turned that big cannon off. Anywho, so let's just fire one of these and show you. So you just click it, it lets go, and then it fires. While it's in its letting go phase, it doesn't explode. There you go, there he goes, and as he has no target, he's just going to loop off and he'll hit the ground eventually and cause an explosion. This guy has only got a kilometre's worth of fuel. He's got... So after about a thousand metres, yeah, his contrail will drop off and he'll disappear off. And you can see them both falling there, they'll have shorter ranges. And they've just gone out of render distance there. So this is, this is how the missiles work. You can attach them to any surface whatsoever, any whatsoever. So this is the, what I call the machine gun overkill. Uh, we've got 50 cows on the side, which I'm going to undeploy. There you go, goodbye. Uh, we've got one big Vulcan cannon thing, which, turn it on. Not quite sure what that was. Oh, my tank's still firing at me. And it just fires. It's a bit crazy, and it's quite powerful, and... Off. There you go. And last but not least, we've got our little Vulcan turret thing. I'll just activate one of them. There you go. And if I move my cursor around, unlike the 50 cows, it's got about a 90 degree left and right, and it's got a fairly modest up and down. But again, I fire him off. He's quite fast and he's quite powerful. 
and as you can see you've got different size the different stacks of ammunition here you've got the big one for the massive one you've got these medium sized ones on the back here for the Vulcan and I've got some of the little 50 cal uh, things inside for, for this guy so uh, those are the main guns they just follow your mouse they uh, track wherever your mouse is going and if you swap to a different craft if you've got like a fleet of craft you can activate all their guns and all point in one direction and it will do its best to fire at that with all of them which is pretty cool actually this is the my little take on the stock raven spear mark 3 i've added some taller legs on it to make it stand up off the ground and as you can see i've put a big vulcan cannon on its nose I've got, <coughs> sorry, it's got the big Warthog cannon on the nose, the 30mm, we've got the Vulcans, just two Vulcans on its wings as well, just to help with target acquisition, and then we've got some of the small and the medium sized missiles. At the moment, there are no large, star, uh, there are no large missiles, but uh, I can see more of them coming in the future. So, uh, I'm going to launch this bad boy and we're going to run a few strike missions on the stuff I've got scattered around. I've scattered some targets. I've scattered some targets around near the Kerbal Space Center and we're going to take them out with this aircraft. There we go, we've loaded up on the runway and uh, she's looking pretty good. There we are, nice and loaded. So, all I'm going to do is press my space bar and bring it up to full speed. I'm probably going to fast forward this launch for you guys, so you can watch me take off, but I'm going to do it in a fast forward. So, I'll see you when we get, come around for our mobbing run. We're starting to come up onto our target. We're still at full throttle, so I'm going to bring that down to about half my throttle. Just about, there we go, just to help it slow down a bit. Now, I've selected the short range but high damage blast radius missiles, and I'm kind of keeping my nose pointing kind of vaguely in line with the target. You don't need to be too worried about how, how much in line you are, but it's... Uh, it's usually a good idea to be pointing in the right direction. If you point in the opposite direction, the missile will do its absolute best to get round to the target, but it usually won't make it in time. So we're about 1.7k away from the target. So what I'm going to do is bring the nose up because we're about 400 meters. There we go. We're roughly pointing near the target, so I'm going to fire the first missile off now and the second missile off now. There we go. And you can see he's just arcing down to the target. So that was an explosion near to the target, but nothing really much else happened. Oop. No explosions. He's spinning. Ah, oh, there we go. So it was a direct hit. He jumped, up, jumped him up in the air. And that's, that's bounced from there to there. Yep. So that looks like it's uh, some kind of definite hit. I'm activating my... Gatling turret. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hit my target. I'm 2.3k out. I'm actually going to launch my anti-air because they've got a longer range. Uh, so I'm going to 5-1, I've turned off my Vulcan and I've now got my other cannons on. So yeah, there they are loud. You can see the contrast. Going by, there we go. So, wow, this thing's exploding, it's pretty cool. So that was a direct hit on my second target, which was a landed 
uh, landed airplane. This is my Raven Spear Mark III take on the bomber. You can see I've taken most of the weapons off, apart from the uh, Vulcans on the front there for self-defense purposes, and a whole load of racks of bombs. Now, quite a lot of these weapons, they like I said, they can be mounted onto any surface whatsoever. So if I get a, if I go to utility and just scroll across to where my bombs are, and go. Boop, let's add another bomb on the wing, why not? There we go, and it's attached directly onto a wing part from a mod, it's not a stock part, so as you can see these these work, as you can see these work pretty well, they work really well on anything, and there we go, So, and I've removed all the ammunition as well, so I'm going to hit launch, and save and hit launch, there you go, clear the runway. Now, the bombs, there is one very slight glitch, or I think it's a glitch with the bombs. It might be just working as intended and this is the way how it works. If you have other things like, if you have the missiles on the ship with bombs, you have to fire off the missiles, all of them, before the bombs start showing their aim identifier, kind of like aim target thing that appears on the ground. Now, I'm going to launch this and I'm going to cut for till when I reach height and I can show you what this aim thing looks like. So, I'll see you in a second, guys. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Now, as you can see, my bomber is up and just past the runway, in fact. And I'm going to start rotating and... You see over there in the distance, there's a giant um, aiming kind of targeting receptacle. So I'm going to bring this this bad boy around. Now, this giant targeting kind of general area where the bombs are going to be landing thing only appears. There you go. He's brought in that. There it is. Now we're not in the sunshine. Only appears when you're over 200 meters. And you are either only five degrees above the horizon line or below. So you can either be flying level or diving at a target and you'll get this kind of giant aiming kind of hazy circle there. As you can see it's moving as the nose of my craft swings around as well. So I'm going to bring you back in and uh, when we get close to bombing some targets. So I've selected my target off in the distance. They don't work like missiles, but it's generally a good idea just to select a target so you've got it on your nav ball, just as that little pink marker that comes off. Now this target thing is just a general idea where your bombs could land. There are it does have a bit of a randomness factor involved. So generally a good idea just to take it as an indication about where you're gonna where they're gonna land. Try and land up on your tar line up on the target, and then stop start dropping bombs before your target has uh, actually got to the uh, before your target marker has got to the target, and then just keep dropping bombs until you've gone past the target until this has gone past the, past the other side, and you should get a nice line of strikes against those particular items. So what I'm going to do is I've got a cluster of vehicles at the end of the runway there, and I'm I'm just tweaking. Speaking to get my target marker near them, and then as it comes near to them, I'm gonna go start dropping. There we go, and I'm gonna scroll up, and you can see just these this massive line of bombs just drop away from my craft. And yes, they're exploding quite away from there, because... Oh, are we going to get the target? Are we going to get the target? Yes! Target well struck. Oh wow, bits of... <laughs> wow, those bits have gone everywhere. I mean, there's loads of tank flying off there. You can tell that the light from their spotlights which are on. Oh, there's just bits flying absolutely everywhere. Oh, I thought they were going to hit that as well. There you are, there's a, ta a tank was thrown in the air there, that's it breaking up there. As you can see, there's just lines of explosions and stuff everywhere. So, 
the reason why I've uh, done a spotlight on this mod, ladies and gentlemen, is because unlike some other weapons based mods, which I may do a spotlight on in the future, this mod is... <sighs> look at that big gun. <laughs> Flew all the way over there. This mod is simple to install. All you need to do is unzip the download and then drop the unzipped file into your game data folder, which is the, the same folder that you dump all of your mods into, unless you've got something a little bit funky or it's a build of some kind. Wow, these bits... <laughs> these bits are going all the way up in the air, that's pretty funny. It's still raining parts, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, this mod's easy. You drop it in the game data file folder. There's nothing, nothing easier than that. So if you want to blow some stuff up, I definitely suggest you downloading this mod. It may be appearing in my uh, in series three of my KSP War series, uh, PvP series, in fact. And um, yeah, we're just uh, wondering which bits to add into the series and uh, how we're going to get it to work. So I think 4040. I hope this has been informative. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, hit that thumbs up. If you think that if you didn't enjoy it, then hit the thumbs down and let me know how I can improve. And thank you very much for watching. Bye now.